Hello and welcome everyone to another edition of Spiritual You. I'm your host, teacher April Neil Pettiford, and you have tuned into Spiritual You on Lamb of God Networks, listening, announcing, ministering, and broadcasting the word of God to the people of God. Today is Saturday, the 17th of September, 2022, and we have a wonderful message in store for you today. So sit back, relax, get your hearts ready, get your minds ready, get your pens and pencils ready to hear from what thus saith the Lord. Wow. Have you been holding on to your faith? I've been holding on to mine. And you know what? Whatever God says will come to pass. It shall come to pass. Sometimes the enemy will show us reality of situations that's going on around us and it gets us caught up with the moment. But guess what God says? All things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So that's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Everything is going to work out for the good. You just got to keep holding on to your faith. And what is faith? Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Even of what you're looking at looks like it's the bitter end. It doesn't mean that that's the reality. Ah, I love that song that we was listening to by the Mississippi Mass Choir entitled Holding On. And that's what we have to do today. Okay, our message today is going to be coming from the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. And the title of today's message is called Speak What You See and Wait on the Outpouring. I'll say that again. Speak what you see and wait on the outpouring the outpouring of what the holy ghost the outpouring of god's promise coming into fruition glory be to god so go to your bible to the book of first kings chapter 18 and while you're searching the scriptures finding that text i'm going to be reading about what the book of first kings is all about as i always say it's always best to know where you've been in order to know where you're going all right. Now, these are the vital statistics of the book of First Kings. The purpose is to contrast. That means to show the difference. The lives of those who live for God and those who refuse to do so through the history of the kings of Israel and Judah. Do you know that there's a vast difference in the way that people who love God and live for God live their lives on a daily basis than those who are outside of the body of Christ? People who are outside of the body of Christ put their hopes on themselves, their finances, and things that are tangible. And they're not thinking about the spirituality. They're not looking at God as their blessed hope. People who are inside the body of Christ knows that everything comes from God. He is our source. And Jesus is being our source. He will pull on resources to meet our needs. Glory be to God. The author is unknown and possibly Jeremiah or a group of prophets. And the setting, the once great nation of Israel turned into a land divided, not only physically, but also spiritually. And the key verses reads as follows. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and wilt keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. As I promised to David thy father saying, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Glory be to God. May God add a blessed reading to his already blessed word. So I hope that you've already turned in your text, the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. And this is about Elijah, strong man of God. And when he prays for rain, there was a great drought in this time. And God shut up the heavens for a space of three and a half years. And Elijah prayed. So we're going to see the power of prayer. And not only that, what I want you to turn your attention to is how Elijah saw something so small, but knew that that small fragment that he saw, that small vision in the sky of a cloud, he knew that there was something great, a great outpouring that was about to occur. So even though something seems small and minute, God can do great things with that small, minute things, because the Bible tells us that that little becomes great when put in the hands of God. 
Little becomes much. God can make the increase because he is the God of increase. Glory be to God. Okay, Elijah prays for rain. Verse number 41, that's where we're going to start. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink. For there is a sound, underline that in your text, the sound of an abundance of rain. He didn't even have to see it because the Bible says faith come in by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So he had that faith in his heart. And he said, here comes a sound. He didn't even see the fruition, but he spoke that thing. He spoke what he's seen. You got to speak what you see until you see what you say. Glory be to God. So verse 42, two reads as thus. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. And Elijah went to the top of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. I want you to get a visual of this. He's not praying upright. He's not standing and walking and marching. He took the position of prayer. He took the position of a woman giving birth in, in travail. Back in those days, a lot of times when women gave birth, they squatted down and they pressed their, their, their elbows together. They pressed their knees and they put their face in between their knees. See, I want you to get a visual of this. He was in travail and he was praying earnestly through his heart. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. Now here in the prophet, Elijah is taking the position of prayer. Many of us need to take the position of prayer. Give it to God. Pour out before the Lord. Glory be to God. Now let's see what happens. Verse 43. And it says, and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. Underline that in your text. He says seven times. Now, the biblical number of seven is the number of completion. We got to allow God to do the completed work in our lives. Allow God to do the completed work in our situation. Don't give up so quick just because what you're praying about doesn't come into fruition immediately. That's why he says, pray without ceasing. Glory be to God. Verse 44, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, that means look. There arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. How small is that? The size of a man's hand, a cloud that small in the vast firmament of the sky. Glory be to God. And he said that right there is all I need to know. That is all I need to say to understand that that's a great harvest, a great outpouring about to come forth because I pray. That's why you got to wait on the outpouring of God. Wait to God pours out his abundance. Once you take the position of prayer upon your situation and you declare unto the Lord, say, Lord, I may not know the ins and the outs of this situation, but I know that you do, Jesus Christ. And everything that I am, I place in your hands, Jesus Christ. My situations, I place in your hands. Myself, I place in your hands. Glory be to God. Hey, glory be to God. Allow that small vision of hope do a miraculous change in your life. Take that position of prayer and take faith. You don't have to always see it visually to know for real that God is at work. So you have to see what you say. You have to say what you see before you actually see what you say. Speak those things that are not as though they were. Life and death lies within the power of the tongue. Glory be to God. And verse 44, I'll read that again. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, and the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass that in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah that he girded up his loins. That means he picked up his clothes and his cloak that he had on and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Now, now, if you're looking at this, Elijah was running mighty fast because he outran the chariots of Ahab. Glory be to God. That man, he went ahead and knew that God was at work even when he couldn't see the hand of God working. 
He didn't give up because he knew that prayer worked. And that's what I want for us to understand today, that prayer works. You got to put prayer on it and believe God. Now, I've done a little bit of research on Bible verses on the power and significance of speech. That's why we have to understand that what we see, we have to take a say, takes an account for what we see. Because the Bible says this in Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 15 and 2 reads as thus, the tongue of the wise make knowledge acceptable, but the mouth of fools spouts folly. Folly is foolishness. Proverbs 13 and 3 reads as thus, the one who guards his mouth preserves his life. The one who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. Proverbs 13 and 3. Proverbs 16 and 27 reads as thus. A worthless man digs up evil while his words are like scorching fire. Glory be to God. We have to be careful not to say evil things and evil words. That's why it's easy to spot out someone who loves God in contrast to someone who is of this world. The Bible says that let our conversations be as it becometh the gospel of Jesus Christ. Only let our conversations be as that. Because if we're speaking of things that does not uplift the kingdom of God, we're speaking damnation. And God gives us power. You know why? Because we are made in God's image. The foundations were formed by the word of God. Jesus spoke. Jesus was there from the beginning of time. When God spoke, life happens. The worlds were framed. Stars were framed. People were framed. Life was framed by God speaking life. And just like that, we have inherited that ability from our heavenly father. So we have to guard our mouths, guard this tongue, which is a deadly, mighty little member. Glory be to God. James 1 and 19 reads as thus, this you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Wow. Not only are we supposed to be slow to speak, but slow to anger. Now, what does the Bible tell us about anger? Anger rests within the bosom of a fool. Does that mean that we're never to be angry? No, of course not, but we don't let it dwell there. God said, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You got to handle things quickly because we don't know when God is going to require our soul of us. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. The Bible says, get mad and sin not. Now, what does that mean? We are emotional creatures. God created us to be emotional creatures. Even Jesus himself got mad before and turned over tables in the, in, the, in the temple. Why did he do that? Because they were making the temple of God a den of thieves. They were selling things in the temple. And that's not what they were supposed to be doing. And it upset Jesus. Now, Jesus did not sin. Now, God tells us that we have the ability to get mad and sin not. When you're mad, you can voice what you say. You can say, you know what? I'm feeling such and such and such and such. I don't have to curse. I don't have to swear, but I can use my words eloquently enough to let you understand this is how I'm feeling at this present moment. And the person who you're talking to may receive you or may not, but you have to make sure that you are in the right standing with God. And how do you do that? You have to pray without ceasing. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. You have to pray for the mind of Christ and let God lead you on every decision that you make, on everything that proceedeth out of your mouth. Glory be to God. Well, I hope that you all have enjoyed today's short message on Spiritual You Networks. But before we go ahead and we um, close out for today, I want to read to you a poem that I have written. And I would also like to close out with prayer after this poem. The title of this poem is called Life in Jesus. A man whom was humble as a sheep and as gentle as a dove paid the ultimate price for our sins and he did it with love. With crown of thorns on his head and nails on his hands and feet, all he could do was hang his head and weep. On Calvary, he mounted his cross with nothing but vinegar to quench his thirst. His life he sacrificed for us all, all of us, from the best to the worst. On the third day he arose and conquered death. He also set the captives free. 
the chance to reign with him, the king of kings, the great almighty. Death couldn't hold him in his grave, for it was nowhere near the end. There is life in Jesus, and he is a true friend. Glory be to God. Jesus is our friend. The Bible says, no greater love has any man than a man laid down in life for his friends. And who did Jesus consider his friends? Us, his church. Even before we came to Christ, he still loved us enough to die for all of us from the very best to the very worst. And he did it all when he died on Calvary. He gave us the chance to accept him as our personal Lord and Savior and be counted as his church. Glory be to God. And what does it mean to be a part of Jesus' church, the body of Christ? It means that we have accepted, we have repented of our sins. What does it mean to repent? It means to turn around. It means to say, God, I am truly sorry for offending you. Forgive me of our sins. The Bible says we are, were born into sin and shaped in iniquity. Glory be to God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But guess what? Just because we sin does not mean that there's an end. Jesus Christ is our advocate. He is our go-between person. The Bible says no man can come into the Father except he come in through me. Jesus Christ says that about himself. We can come through Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. I just love that because once we repent and then we have to be baptized in Jesus name and we have to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. You have to be born of the water and of the spirit. Glory be to God in order to be counted as Jesus's church. Have you accepted Jesus Christ to be your personal savior? I hope that you have. And if you haven't, here's the opportunity that you can make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior by praying this simple prayer. May, I, may we just go ahead and go to God in prayer at this present moment. Most gracious Father, we come to you as humble as we know how, Jesus Christ said, thank you. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for loving us so much that you died in our place, Jesus Christ. You gave up your life on Calvary, Jesus Christ, for us. Father God, I ask that you just deal with the hearts and minds of those who have not accepted you as their own personal Lord and Savior. Help them to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I have done things to displease you. Father God, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart, Jesus Christ, and make me brand new. I accept you, Lord, as my personal Lord and Savior. Help me to live a lifestyle that is hope that is that is honorable in your sight. These and other blessings, Jesus, we ask in your name. Thank you for saving my soul. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. If you have prayed that prayer with me on today, congratulations. You are now part of the body of Christ. But guess what? That's not it. Now that you have repented, you have to be born of the water. You have to be born of the water. That means that you have died, have to die in Christ. Lord, glory be to God in that watery grave. The Bible says you were born of the water and of the spirit. The Bible says that baptism is a deed and anything that's done in word or in deed do all in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to find yourself a church, a born again, baptized, believing church that believes on the name, the apostolic doctrine of Jesus Christ. And what is the apostolic doctrine? That's the way that Jesus Christ has set up the church to follow the apostles doctrine, the way that he had taught the apostles. Glory be to God. I'm so happy that you all have tuned in to Lamb of God Networks on Spiritual You. Thank you, Jesus, for this moment. Let's strive every day to make tomorrow a better you by today's more spiritual you. I'm your host, teacher April Nell Pettiford. I love you all in the effortless and match name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I see you all next week Saturday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Love you. Bye-bye.